Hello, every guppy. My name is Pisces, and I'm a professional Dead by Daylight coach on Fiverr. I've been coaching DBD for over two and a half years now, and I've accumulated a flawless review record, all of which are five stars. And I want to welcome y'all back to the Timeless Guide to Dead by Daylight series. In this episode, I'm going to give you an incredible foundational understanding of the chases in Dead by Daylight. What I'm going to teach you in this episode will completely reshape how you visualize the game. So just a quick disclaimer, when I'm discussing chases in DBD, I'm going to be keeping it as foundational as humanly possible, and will be completely disregarded regarding killer's individual powers. Killer powers are a unique variable that are added to the rules of chase. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Every decision you make in chase is going to revolve around one word, and that word is distance. Everything about Dead by Daylight in Chase revolves around distance. Chase is just a glorified battle of Survivor trying to get a little bit further away from the killer, and therefore trying to create distance from the killer. Since the killer is slightly faster than Survivor's, it is only a matter of time before the killer catches up to you. And how much time it takes to catch up to you is governed by how much distance away from the killer you are. So you can envision it as distance equals time alive. Right? So of course, if you're further away, it takes him longer to get to you. If he's closer, it takes him less time to get to you. And I know this sounds very elementary, but it's very important to break the game down like this, because this fundamental understanding is going to change a lot of decision making you're going to have in your chase. So as time goes on, the killer's progressively closing distance on you, so what are you going to have to do? Well, you're going to need to create more distance. And this is where windows and pallets come in. However, just because you use a pallet or window, it doesn't mean that you're actually going to be creating distance from the killer when you're doing it. It's pretty situational and there are right and wrong ways to vault a window. The distance created by a window or pallet depends on two things, the structures they're attached to and where the killer is when you use the window or pallet. So first let's go ahead and talk about the structures. When I vault a window with a short wall attached to it, I am adding a short distance between me and the killer. If I vault a window with a long wall attached to it, he has to travel around a longer wall, and therefore it'll take more distance for the killer to reach me. So by nature you can generally say that windows and pallets are stronger when they're attached to larger structures or longer structures, whatever creates more distance. However, just because shorter walls create less distance doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad, it just means that you're going to need to use a window or pallet again in a little bit faster time, right? Because he's going to catch up to you a little faster, so you're going to want to have to use a window or pallet again. If you can get back to windows quickly and quickly and the walls are short, it's not so bad. Sometimes. Because another thing it depends on is the second factor I just talked about, and that is the killer's location. Wherever the killer is located is an absolute critical factor in your chase and something you must know in your chase to make an educated decision. So like I mentioned, distance is created by the props the window or pallets attached to, right? But this is only true if the killer's standing in the right places. If I vault the window with the killer standing here, notice how now he has to walk the added distance of the wall that is now placed between us, which is very standard. Notice now, if I vault the same window with the killer standing here, I do not put any props in between us or any walls in between us, therefore I do not create any distance. Same goes for pallets. If I use a pallet with the killer here, it is not good because he is not getting any distance put in between us and him. But if I use it in this situation, it creates that needed distance. Notice how he is on the complete other side of the pallet and now he has to travel around these walls or kick the pallet to remove that distance in between us. So once again, this is why it's very important to be paying attention where killer is. So if you really do struggle with that, this is why my first episode was about camera placement and control. So seriously, if you're one of those players who panic and guess a lot and don't know how to look back or aren't comfortable looking back and you're kind of always in a freaking out state, you're not really sure how to loop, that definitely will make a huge difference in your chase, just being able to comfortably use your controls and look back, so I really encourage you to watch the last video. Alright, so now that we know the importance of distance and the fundamental ways distance is created in chase, well, let's talk about another critical topic, and that is pathing. Or in other words, the path you take in your chase. Since we know that distance away from the killer equals more time for the killer to catch up to you, then we can logically say that it is generally better to take the shortest path to a window or pallet than to take a longer one, or else they'll catch up to you, right? You don't want to give the killer more time to hit us. So let's talk about taking our shortest possible paths in chase. When you're navigating your surroundings, it is important to be able to visualize these fastest paths. And I'm not joking when I say this, there is not a single person that I've coached that hasn't had a pathing problem. There are even content creators you've heard of 
with like 9,000 hours in the game that have very minor pathing issues. So even they have problems, so don't feel bad if you realize your pathing is absolutely whack after watching what I talk about here and you've never really thought of it before. Or even if you've played a lot, don't think that this information is not for you, because again, I have not coached a single person who hasn't had a pathing problem. Let's look at the fastest paths at a loop called an LT. This is a loop with two windows and the walls they're attached to are shaped like an L and T. And I've already shown this thing a million times in this video and, and I go over this loop in coaching all the time because it's just the best loop ever. Anyway, so in this loop, let's imagine that I have two ways to run. I can either run around this wall or run around this wall. So what's the shortest path? Well, it's just like a line. The definition of a line is the shortest path between two points. And if I want to find a way from point A to point B, well, there's nothing in the middle of that, so let's just run the straight line to it. If at any time that you're on this point of a loop like this, and you're not on this line, you're essentially wasting distance. So if you run back here, you're going to be adding the distance it takes to run away, and then back to that optimal path, which is just wasting time and giving the killer more time to catch up to you. And if the killer doesn't take that added distance himself, He's catching up to you even faster because he's taking the short path and you are not. Right? Yes. Big. Some for, for some of you, this is probably huge. All right, it gets even better. So if you were to run around corners, I know there's a ton of people, even more so, that turn around their corners widely. A lot of people are very afraid to get stuck on the walls, so let me go ahead and show you something. If you run up to a corner, or any wall in general, and you push up against the wall at a slight angle, it's actually not going to slow you down. As long as you're not going head into the wall like a blight main, you'll be perfectly okay and you won't get stuck on it. So notice how I'll glide right off it. And when you glide off it, you're not going any slower than if you just weren't running against it at all. It actually puts you at the same optimal speed. So it's a real lazy way to guarantee you're running that fastest route without having to actually perfectly run right next to the wall, right? So when you're running around your corners, if you are afraid of getting stuck on the wall, truly are, I'm telling you, it's more worth it to try to get used to being as close around the wall as possible than to be running wide to get stuck on it, because I'm going to go ahead and show you here. Look at these chases where I run wide around the corners because I'm afraid to touch them. It adds distance in my chase, and when my killer doesn't take those wide turns, they're able to hit me just barely before the window. And so, them hitting you barely through a window is should be your key sign that unless you know you path perfectly, you should know that this is your fault. <laughs> Oh, and another reason to watch this episode if you haven't already is if you're not comfortable mechanically doing this, turning around corners. I discussed a cool trick where you can turn your camera to turn around corners, and if you're on a controller, there's a specific sensitivity you can use to curve corners at the perfect rate just by turning your camera. You won't even have to change your movement analog. You can just turn the corner naturally and get your information and path perfectly. It's super awesome. And so to conclude the video, I'm going to go ahead and run a few example chases where I'm gonna have proper pathing, and I want you to study my path. Watch how I take the optimal paths when I need to. I either run straight lines when that's the fastest route, or I curve around the props when that's the fastest route. Oh, and I'm probably gonna sound a lot different because I'm gonna record this at a different time, so big cat kiss to future me. I'm gonna love it. Wow, thanks for cat kissing that sub button, me. Imagine if more people did that. Wouldn't that be great? All right, guys, so let's talk about how I'm gonna run these chases. So after this window vault, we'll start getting into it. So, Killer's Vault in the window behind me, so it takes him slightly longer, so that gives me enough distance to run to a new loop. I try to run to this loop, which I recognize as the three lane, has a window and pallet, and I know where the window is around this corner, and I take my fastest route to this window in order to get a fast vault. I now notice once again the Killer is vaulted, so it takes him longer to vault than me, so I go for another lap around and go through the window again. I'm not getting much distance off these windows until he starts vaulting it, so this is a misplay on Killer's end. And now that Killer lost me in a mind game, I decided to take that distance from the mind game and use it to run to another route. And now that I've ran to this pallet, I'm trying to approach it in a way that forces him to go on a route where he's placed in a spot where I get distance when I drop the pallet. So now that I'm pathing super close to these corners, Killer's not pathing so perfectly, so I was able to take an extra lap. I drop it when he's right on the opposite side, so he has to kick it. And if he doesn't kick it, then I just get distance from the pallet. I fake him a little bit on that rock and I go up this hill. Alright, in this chase, Killer starts from kind of far away, and notice how I run into the loop in a way that lets me set myself up to vault this window with Killer straight on the other side of it. Now he has to walk all the way around that wall to catch up to me. And as I go into the loop, I expect him to think I'm going to go to the window, so I decide to actually run through Pallet. He follows behind me, and now I've got him in a way where I vault this window here, he has to walk all the way around the wall or vault the window. And I try to time the vault in a way that's going to make him not be able to react to me cutting off, because he could have cut me off there, but he wasn't ready for it. I run a path back into loop the same way that puts Killer behind me. Notice how Killer location is really key in a lot of this. 
After all this time has gone by, I know he has Bloodlust, which means his movement speeds a lot faster, so I need to start finding ways to get rid of it. One of those ways is pallets. So I keep trying to throw pallets in a way that makes him lose a lot of distance, so he'll like kick it and he won't do it. So in this way, I'm kind of just getting free time wasted because he's just refusing to kick the pallet. And I just keep vaulting over, keep trying to get him to kick this pallet. I'm just kind of chaining these together, showing him it's literally possible to catch me until he presses the button on his keyboard that hits the pallet. So I run to another one, trying my best, like, okay, this one's huge. If I stun him, maybe he'll kick it. I run this way, like, I'm kind of just waiting for him to kick it so I can get out of here. All right, now, finally that he kicks it, he has to spend time kicking it, which gives me distance, right? And now he kind of lost me on that rock, which gave me even more time. So instead of having to play the pallet, I was actually, okay, I'll save the pallet and just go to this window here. And I vault it in a way that's going to look at that, create more distance. I wait for him to come in, make a decision which way he takes the route to me. I path wide here just so I can get a fast vault. I'm not going to go into that, but there are ways to get fast vaults that involve pathing. Um, and so now I just keep running this loop, looking back and forth. If you watched the first episode, you know that I've been turning these corners with my camera facing ahead of my character, like looking back like this so I can see into the loop sooner. See how I pass to the wall, I can see into the shack. I see his red stain through the wall for some reason, so I know he cuts me off. He keeps vaulting through the window, I'm just using that as free distance. And at this point in chase, I actually don't have chase considered picked up because I'm not running. He tried to bloodlust me at Shaq, so I just decided to start walking when I was in his view so the game wouldn't think we're in chase, and then therefore it wouldn't give him bloodlust. Right, he finally commits to a different type of route, so I ended up deciding to, instead of using the pallet in there, I'm going to use this one. Tried to stun him, didn't work, fake him out a bit here. And yeah, now I could probably connect this back to Shaq but I want to make sure he falls for a fake first and see how he hesitated. That gave me enough distance to make the window. Like I said, everything is about distance. So we just keep running him at Shaq for honestly quite a long time. This is almost maybe some set of bullying. He kind of surprised me with this here, but another thing I did here is I threw the pallet, right? And that made it to where I get a lot of distance. He can't walk around that one. So he literally has to kick it. And since I stunned him, he stopped still for even longer. So look at all the distance I get from this, a crazy amount of distance. So I'm taking this and I'm using it to connect back to main where I know that breakable wall is still there. So no matter what, when I vault this, he's forced to stop and kick that wall. If he doesn't, I can run up here and waste some more time. So I'm getting a crap ton of time wasted. He's taking um, some longer routes to me probably and I'm taking, you know, my fastest paths. I'm not hugging or sorry, I'm not like wide off the walls when I'm coming around them. And I'm taking straight lines to every single option, every single route I want to take. I'm kind of waiting for him to figure out how the top of this building works. And I'm literally just going to camp this pallet because I can't see on either side of it. So you notice how I flick my camera back and forth waiting to figure out where his red stain is. He comes from the further side. So I just throw that. He's forced to kick this and I go ahead and run back down here. It takes him long enough to kick that, or even though I kind of get staggered here, I know I just barely make it through this window, so he's still just now dropped down. He has to kick this door, and so I'm good to go on here. Again, it's all about distance. I'm just knowing how long it takes for me to get from my new option that creates more distance. And with all that distance I made from him having to kick the wall, I run all the way back to our beloved shack, which is really fair and balanced for survivors and M1 killers. <laughs> so anyway... We're running over to Shaq, I'm pretending to look forward like I can't see anything, and I thought he wouldn't think I'd vault, but I guess he did, and yeah. So notice how when I vaulted, and I didn't do it correctly, he was able to cut me off quickly, because I didn't create enough distance between us when I vaulted. So that was the one time I didn't create proper distance, and I didn't pick a time to vault the window correctly, and I also didn't look back, and then that was the reason I got hit. Huge deal. That'll conclude it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys consider subscribing because there's going to be another video in the series that takes this fundamental idea of pathing and distance and teaches you how to connect multiple tiles in your chase in order to make your chases last for an extremely long time. Also, please be sure to like it if you actually found it helpful and comment down below what maybe helped you out and if you think any of your friends could enjoy it. I mean, or if you got any questions, I love going down in the comments and answering questions. I read every single one and reply to all the ones that feel constructive or, or just nice. <laughs> so y'all have a great day and I'll see y'all next week.